Being part of the Boston Marathon, the club, they say it's like the, uh, like the greatest finish line you'll ever cross. If you're from Boston, you're kind of blunt, and you know what you want, and you're going to get it. There's something about what I've seen in Boston about just being so supported by the city the whole time, and that seems just so incredibly cool. You know, and I just want to be a part of that because it's, I feel like it's a, like a special accomplishment. Well, what will it mean to you when you, when you finally get the opportunity? A lot, a lot. Wow. <laughs> Actually? No way, really? Oh, thank you. My name is CJ Royland. I'm a surgical resident in Boston. I've lived here for about nine months. Being in the hospital 12, 13 hours a day, six days a week, it's a very stressful environment. We now are responsible for what happens to human beings, and it's a lot to take in day to day. And the run is really a way to separate from that, to free myself from whatever happened. There's something about wanting to do the most difficult thing that has always been a pattern for me in my life. Knowing that the Boston Marathon was so hard to get into, it was such a big, historic, epic event. Put it on my radar pretty much as soon as I started running in high school, I think. I didn't think I was fast enough when I first started training. And then it wasn't until my first race that I thought, okay, maybe. I came to visit Boston for the first time in my last year of college when I was looking at medical schools and I was looking up here. And I went for a run on the Esplanade and I loved it. I thought, I need to run in this city, and I need to run the Boston Marathon. And so I've been trying to ever since. When I finally get to run it, I think I'll probably cry the whole time. Definitely when I finish. But it's been such a long time coming of working towards this goal. The first time, I was eight seconds off. Recently, I think I was more like a minute and a half off or something along those lines. So I qualified, but I, I understand that there's so many people out there who qualify and, and do so faster. My friends and, and my family are very supportive of my insane addiction and obsession with running the Boston Marathon. They understand that I won't stop until I do it. My name is John Noosh, and I currently live in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. I am a retired teacher, and I love to run. When I ran just cross country in high school, I finished running in 1987 and I ain't run another 5K until uh, 2015. In terms of running this competitive and a quest for a marathon, absolutely was not till my 40s. I didn't think it was gonna be that difficult. Just, you know, they always say everything, you know, everything's like riding a bike. And then when I started trying to run even a lap around the track, I felt embarrassed. And then, you know, then you kind of come to a point like, am I too old for this? Am I, am I too late in the game for this? Or should I just stop and uh, maybe walk instead? <laughs> I'm very big on everything's mind over matter, and let's see how, how tough I can do this. So I went after it. Well, running a Boston Marathon, you know, I would say, when, it, means, it means a lot in many ways. And what I mean is, I've been living up here since 1995. You know, I've gotten to, you know, watch it every year. And, and the history behind it, and the, the pride in it, the significance of it, you know, the first marathon to be run in 1897, the year after the modern day Olympics. You know, the massive fan support. You hear about all the, you know, they talk about the Scream Tunnel, and you hear about, you know, the Heartbreak Hill, and what separates the Boston Marathon is how you get into it. So they say it's, it's like the Mecca, it's like the holy grail of any amateur to see, okay, where do I stack up? Can I actually accomplish that goal? So when I, Ran in 2019, and I had to run under 320, and I ran like a 318, I think 39. And I get the email on my birthday, which is September 25th, saying, unfortunately, I selected. I was 18 seconds short. I, I couldn't believe it. The easiest thing to do is to quit. The easiest thing to do is to give up. And I've never done that, you know, whether it's in school, whether it's in sports, or anything in life. I enjoy proving people wrong. My brother always reminds me, he always says, he's like, hey, you know, John, you've You've run three qualifiers, you know, like, so it's, you have gotten there, but I'm like, I haven't gotten there. You know, I'm, I'm 
almost there. It's like you wrote a book, but not the conclusion, I guess, you know, and I, I gotta write the final chapter. I know this sounds stupid, but I don't feel like I can call myself a real runner until I've run the Boston Marathon. I've actually never even gone to see it because I don't want to experience that feeling until I'm in the race myself. My boyfriend thinks I'm crazy. Every time I have a long run, he's like, are you sure you wanna do that? I think I first realized I was a tenacious person when I got to like early high school. I was on the cross country team and I was like able to keep up with the boys. I love that when I run, it's a direct correlation between like how much effort you put in and what your result is. I feel like I cannot function until I've had my run. It's just that sense of calm for me. My growth as a runner has been very complicated. My freshman year of college, I ran for the, the college team, got injured and ultimately developed like a really severe eating disorder and like a very bad like compulsive exercise habit. I was exercising like three to four times a day, seven days a week and just like eating next to nothing to the point where my heart almost stopped beating. I had bradycardia. I went from being in the best shape of my entire life to being on chair rest for like a year. And I was prohibited from doing any sort of exercise because it was so compulsive for me. I mean, it was pretty severe. I was hospitalized um, for a couple months. I don't know what happened that made me want to get back into it again. I think it was just a desire to like be outside and move my body and see how I could move my body and have a relationship with running again that felt positive and eventually like came back to it full force. And it's still a challenge every day, for sure. Um, marathon training is not an intuitive process by any means. The, when the day comes that I finally get to run Boston, um, I will just feel, I think, complete satisfaction because I've worked so hard to get here and it's been a long time coming. Hey John, we have a note for you from Dick's Sporting Goods that we'd like you to read out loud. Oh. Absolutely. Dear CJ. Dear John. Dear Carly. At Dick Sporting Goods, we believe in the transformative power of sports and recognize the immense commitment and perseverance it takes to qualify for the Boston Marathon. We are inspired by your dedication to reaching the Boston qualifying standard three times while balancing the demands of medical school and surgical residency. Because we believe sports changes lives, we want to recognize your exceptional achievements We are thrilled to offer you a bib. We are thrilled to offer you a bib and entry <laughs> into this year's Boston Marathon. Congratulations, you earned it. See you at the starting line, Dick's Sporting Goods. No way, really. Congratulations, you've earned it. <laughs> Congratulations, you've earned it. <laughs> See you at the starting line. I get to actually do it. I get to run the Boston Marathon this year. They actually have a bib for me. That's insane. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is amazing. I gotta call my parents. What? Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Are you f kidding me? <laughs> you are? Yeah. So running the marathon tomorrow means the world to me. This is happening, you know, because tomorrow is, is the day. And it's been a long time coming. Because it's something you've been waiting for for almost a decade, you know, and then to actually say, yes, John, here's your bib. It's just pure joy. It's just euphoric. I've always dreamed of doing this and like being able to do it at 25 just feels like a nice like quarter life moment for me. Um, it's always been on my bucket list. I've alternated this week between like periods of being very, very just grateful and thrilled and periods of being so nervous. But then I remind myself that this is the coolest thing that I've ever gotten to do. It's one of the best feelings I've ever had as being an athlete since I've been five years old. I've like read about this race, I've seen social media about this race, I've heard about it, but it's weird for me to be the one here picking up my like bib. Oh, tomorrow's a Boston Marathon. I can't believe I'm running it. I am so thrilled, so excited. Bring it on. Honestly, being here feels kind of surreal. Um, there's a lot of people. <laughs> um, I wasn't expecting it to be like this large and like this spread out. The atmosphere here in the Athletes Village is so hype 
and supportive. You can just tell there's like a lot of like nervousness in the air, um, but I kind of like it. It's not any race. So the Boston Marathon is the race. You have to earn your way into this, and that means something to him. Running a marathon's not for everyone, and what better marathon to run than Boston? It doesn't get crazier than that. When that gun goes off, I need to relax because I have a tendency to sprint out with everybody who's around me really fast and I need to just run my own race. When that gun goes off, I'm probably going to feel even more nervous than I do right now, but I'm gonna try to stay calm and keep it easy. And so I need to remind myself that as exciting as this is, I need to make it the whole way. <laughs> so I'm just gonna try to take a deep breath and get into the zone. Just to see her achieving something that she's worked so hard for, and that is what makes me happy. That's what fills me with joy, to see her doing what it is that she loves. Running for John, it's a really focused way to move through difficult times. Um, running also is part of his family. His father was a runner in college, and, all, and he remembers his father running all through his life, and his brother is a runner. And I think it's something that connects him with his family. And I think now that both of his parents have passed, he's running for them. I can easily visualize my dad on the sideline. you be yelling, keep going, buddy, keep going, keep pushing. I'm proud of you. You talk about your own dreams coming true. It's pretty cool to watch her have her dreams come true. It's when you face adversity and things get thrown your way or some things come at you that you, had no, you, know, you weren't expecting, because that's what running in this race taught me, that no matter what, if, if you uh, really push yourself, and if you really believe, you can still conquer it. The hardest part was making that decision around like mile six or seven when I like started off um, my goal pace and then just realized that I was either not going to finish or I was going to go slower because my body was just not having it. But once I made that call, once I decided to stop pushing it and just chill out and let go, it was awesome. That was 26.2 miles of a special red carpet, right? And the whole way, when you finally finish, you come to the city of gold. And the people from the start to, you know, to the end were phenomenal. They treated you like royalty. The support is amazing. People holding hands, people like stopping to help other people that were really, really too hot. And I can't believe how many people come out and support for this race. This is my sixth marathon and I've never seen anything like it. Everyone should have put this on their bucket list and be a part of Boston Marathon. I, I can't thank you enough. This was just phenomenal. This was eight years in the making for me. This was after multiple tries, multiple failures, and I think you just have to keep trying and eventually think like hard work does pay off. And I think that's what today was. It's awesome.